welcome. Today we're going to be talking about contracts. This is lecture number one. If you look at your materials, you will see that we start off with contract formation. And one of the important things for you to understand early on is that in general, contract law, in general, contract law is state law. The state laws are the laws that generally apply to the law of contract. And there are uh, materials that are in your outline where you can uh, review just generally. Uh, there is common law that is generally received by jurisdictions as the, the standard for the law of contract. And there's also uh, the Uniform Commercial Code, which is used for the sale of goods for certain amounts. You will study them separately. In your first year of law school, you will be studying state law of contracts. And very often what you will see will be federal decisions applying state law to contracts. So that is a very important distinction. And we start off with the, the uh, case Frigliament Importing versus BNS International Sales. Frigliament. Frigliament is a famous case and you will undoubtedly, well, you, you probably will have this case in, in law school. And it, it's, a, it's a very popular first year law school case. And it asks the question, uh, what is chicken? Which leads me to ask the first question for this outline. What was the principal issue? What was the principal issue in this breach of contract dispute? And here's what the court said. The issue is what is chicken? Plaintiff says chicken means a young chicken suitable for broiling and frying. Defendant says chicken means any bird of that genus that meets contract specifications on weight and quality, including what it calls stewing chicken and plaintiff pejoratively terms fowl. Dictionaries give both meanings as well as some others not relevant here. Now the materials that are linked on from the website uh, will, will, will take you to this case and you will see that there's a contract set forth with some, some language about uh, the purchase, the sale, uh, and purchase of, of chicken. And that's what this lawsuit is about. There's a, dis a dispute has arisen as to what the parties meant by the word chicken. And here you will find a term that's going to be very uh, common when you're studying the law contract. Incorporation by reference. And what the court is saying, what the court means by this is those situations where a contract makes reference to some other document um, that is important to the, the nature of whatever this agreement is all about. And that is, is important because incorporation by reference of particular matter, subject matter, is deemed to be part of the agreement. Next question, what principle of law does the court set forth early in this decision that frames how it rules? Okay. Now, very often this happens. You will find that the court will, early on in this decision, early on in this, in this uh, opinion, uh, state a principle of law that's very important to the outcome of the case. And that's what we have here. And here's what the court said. The case nicely illustrates Holmes' remark that the making of a contract depends not on the agreement of two minds and one intention, but on the agreement of two sets of external signs, not on the parties having meant the same thing, but on their having said the same thing. I have concluded that the plaintiff has not sustained its burden of persuasion that the contract used chicken in a narrower sense. As a general rule, when you're reading cases in your case books, be, be aware of the fact that, that, that there are distinctions that are very important from your reading in college. In other words, when you are in law school, you will find that the case book is broken down into the, the basic case, and then there will be footnotes 
very often you'll see a large number of footnotes. The footnotes are as important as the case itself. Also, you will see that there will be sections following the main case. You'll, you'll, you'll have a main case that will take, let's say, a dozen pages. And then there will be paragraphs following that case on the subject matter. And those paragraphs will have a series of, uh, of uh, statements about the law. They'll have a series of citations of various cases. And they will set forth additional information about that area of the law. That material, even though it looks like it's just something that's you know, thrown in there as an afterthought, that material is important. And it is very, very often used in exams. So when you're reading your cases, everything is important. The majority opinion is important. The dissenting opinion is important. That's, that's obviously, I'm sure you know this, that, that very often courts are not unanimous in their decisions. There will be a majority opinion where the majority opinion is going to be the whole of the court. And there will be dissenting opinions. And there are also concurring opinions. And those concurring opinions are very important too. Everything is important. Do not think that the professor will not talk about the dissent, will talk about the concurrence. Do not think that they won't talk about the footnotes. I advise you to treat all of it uh, as very important. What was the plaintiff's burden of proof? In other words, what was the plaintiff required to prove to win its case? Here's what the court said. The court has the burden of showing that chicken was used in the narrower sense rather than the broader sense. And this is, has not sustained. The burden of proof is very important because whatever case you're reading, one party is going to have a burden of proof. The plaintiff. The plaintiff is bringing this, this lawsuit. The plaintiff has to show that he's been wronged and he has to show certain elements of his case. What was the court's ruling regarding the evidence presented by the parties? When all the evidence is reviewed, it is clear that the defendant believed that it could, it could comply with the contracts by delivering stewing chicken in the two, one and a, one, two and a half to three pound size. When all the evidence is reviewed, it is clear that the defendant believes that it could comply with the contracts by delivering stewing chicken in the two and a half to three pound size. Defendant's subjective intent would not be significant if this did not coincide with an objective meaning of chicken. Here, it did coincide with one of the dictionary meanings, with the definition of the Department of Agriculture regulations, to which the contract made at least oblique reference with at least some users in the trade, with the realities of the market, and with what plaintiff's spokesman had said. Plaintiff asserts it to be equally plain that plaintiff's own subjective intent was to obtain broilers and fryers. The only evidence against this is the material as to market prices, and this may not have been sufficiently brought home. In any event, it is unnecessary to determine that issue. 